Hey y'all, thanks so much for joining us today at The Heart. My name is Dominic Insinius. I'm the leader of this church community, and I'm so grateful that you have taken some time out of your day in your journey of faith to be a part of what God is doing here in the city of San Marcos. We have a saying around here, you don't have to go to church here to go to church here, and that means you are welcome to enjoy this message from your tablet, phone, or computer, wherever you're watching it on. Big things can happen when we expect God to move, so I pray today that God would speak to you through this message, the message today can encourage you and empower you to move throughout your week and what's next in your life. So enjoy this message. We're wrapping up our series called Wish You Were Here, and if you missed any of it, no worries. What, we, what we've done over the last few weeks is talk through the idea of this, this, this gap, this space between where we are in life, where we are at work, where we are in our relationships, and where we wish we were, right? where we wish we could be. We talked about early on, one of, the, one of the easiest ways to see something like this of where we wish we could be, where we wish we were, is if I'm on Instagram and I see people and they just, you know, I, I look on Sunday on Instagram and there's a bunch of photos of somebody who's at the lake all day Saturday, no invite, thanks a lot. And I think, man, I wish I would have been there. I wish I were there. But taking that to even deeper level, we look at our life and we think, where do we wish we were in our life? Where do we wish we were in our faith, in our relationship with God? Or where do we wish we were in our relationship with the people around us? The things that we wish we could do. That space between, that gap between who we are and who we want to become. And so that's what we've been going over the last couple of weeks. And today what I want to do is, is finalize that, wrap that up in one simple word, and that is action. Today, my challenge for you, usually I wait till, towards the end of the message to tell you my challenge for you, but I'm going to tell you right now, my challenge for you for this message, for this series moving forward, is to take action. It is to choose to commit. Taking action is one of the best ways to make progress in your life in anything. When I was, uh, when I was a young man a couple years ago, when I was a younger person, I used to um, do you guys ever see those, uh, those like pill, those pill containers that have, you know, Monday through, you know, or sa Sunday through Saturday or whatever. And, you know, I used to think old people, did anybody else ever think this when you were growing up that old people needed those pill reminder things, those pill boxes. And then something happens at 40. I know some of you are over 40 and you're like, tell me about it when you get older, kid, whatever. But something happens at 40 where I, I thought, I am I think I need one of those pill boxes, one of those pill reminders. Because I tell myself every single day, or I tell myself every time I take whatever pills I need to, I need to take, that this, I'll remember to take this tomorrow. Here's what I'll do. Does anybody else think like this? Here's what I'll do. I'll just put it right here, and I know if the, if the logo's facing me, then I've taken it. And if it's turned away from me, I haven't taken it. And then I never remember that again for the rest of my life. But in that moment, that, that's the system that I'm going to go with. And so something happened at 40, and I was like, if I am really going to commit to taking these pills or doing this thing, that I need to put something in place that will take out all of the barriers for me. That where I don't have to go open each bottle, I don't have to open my, my uh, okay, anyone over 40 help me out here. Uh, just start just start rattling off medicine names. Um, no, not really. Uh, one for my hypertension, one for uh, I got some gut stuff going on. It's tough getting old. And so I had to make that commitment to say, okay, I, 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 need, to, I, need, to, I need to commit to this thing. And I'm just going to be one of those people. And this is how vain I am, okay? If you didn't know that I'm vain, I'll let you know now. This is how vain I am. I'm going to be one of those people that has a pill reminder system, but is there a cool one on Amazon? That's a question I asked myself. 
Is there a cooler looking one on Amazon than ones just that have the big M, T, W, you know? Just me? That's cool. I had to make a commitment. Where, are you, where do you already make a commitment in your life? Before at the end of this message, before the end of the series, I challenge you to make new commitments in your life. I challenge you to take new action in your life. Before I do that, where in your life are you already taking action? Does anybody have to wake up before 6 a.m. on any given day? Go ahead and put your hand up real quick. Okay, a few of us. A few of us have to wake up before 6 a.m. We're going to pray for you guys this morning. Please. Would anyone pray for us? <laughs> All right, now let me ask you this. Those of you that have to wake up before 6 a.m., how often are you staying up past midnight? How often? How many times a week? One, two, three, four, zero? You don't have to wake. Kendra, put your... Why would someone who needs to wake up before 6 a.m. go to bed past midnight? No, they know they are already taking action to get themselves in bed and get sleep. And I'll tell you what, this is a little life hack, okay? If you want to start waking up before 6 a.m. and you think, I'm just not a morning person, first of all, nobody really is. You know what I mean? If you want to start doing that, here's what you need to do. Just force yourself to wake up at 5.30 a.m. for four days in a row, and I promise you, you will not be able to convince your body to stay up late anymore after that. It's a fact. That was for free. That's not even a church thing. That's just for your body. You didn't know you were getting free advice over here at church on Sundays. So what commitments are you already making in your life? What action are you already taking? Because what I want you to be able to see at the end of this, as we, as we talk about this gap between where we are and where we want to be, it can sometimes feel like an impossible gap. It can sometimes feel like an impossible leap to take of where we are and where we wish we could be. But I want, I want you to see that you're already doing things, doing things in your life that are closing that gap in so many ways. If you look back at the person you were a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, where, are you, where have you already closed the gaps in your life that needed action, that needed things to change? Are you the same person financially that you were five years ago? Or have you made wiser decisions? Have you saved a little bit more money? Have you been brave enough to ask for a little bit more money at work? I have this joke with my son. My son, he's, uh, he's 20 years old. And every time he goes to apply for a job, it's kind of a joke, but it's not really a joke because I always say, no matter her, what he asks for, I always say, ask for more money. I wish I was 20 years old and knew what I knew now so I could ask for more money. He called the other day and he said, you know, he got a job and the job with tips is going to pay. I hope he doesn't listen to this one today. <laughs> he doesn't listen. Um, he got a job that pays him $10 an hour. And I was like, Corbin, I was making $10 an hour when I was your age. And he goes, I don't see where I asked you that. And I was like, that's fair. You never asked me. And then I was like, you know what you should do? <laughs> you know what you should do? Let me tell you exactly what you should do. We talked about that a few weeks ago. A surefire way to shut someone down, or at least to shut me down, is to say, you know what you should do? I'll never do that, no matter what you say. Where are you already making a commitment in your life? Where are you already taking action? I want to look at a verse today in the book of James. Now, if you're not familiar with the Bible, James, it's in the New Testament. And James is actually referenced as being one of the uh, brothers. If you're, being, if you're being technical, he is a half-brother of Jesus. And he has a few things to say about what it means to take action in your life. Specifically, what he's going to be talking about here, what we'll look at, is he's talking about how, what it means to take action in your faith. But I think that can easily be applied to what it's like for you and I to take action in our life and what can change, what can happen, what can grow, what can evolve within us and for us when we choose to take action action. So let's look at, uh, let's look at James. This is in chapter one and James is a very short book. It would be, 
I mean, it could be fun if you wanted to. You could read it today, and it would take you all of 10 minutes. But it's got some juice in there. So we're going to look at James chapter 1. And this is around verse 23. We're going to be reading out of the Message Bible. Let me see. Let me find it here. Act on what you hear. We'll just read it up on the screen, won't we? Act on what you hear. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in the mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea who they are or what they look like. But whoever catches a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God, the tree of life, even out of the corner of his eye and sticks to it, whoever hears the word of God, whoever hears the truth that Jesus is trying to share with us, whoever hears that, sees that, grasps that, even out of the corner of their eye and sticks to it, and sticks to it is no distracted scatterbrain, but a man or woman of action. This person will find delight and affirmation in the action. James is talking about finding affirmation, finding the joy in the action. Now, specifically, he's talking about if you're hearing some of the things that God is trying to teach, if you're hearing some of the things that Jesus was teaching to people, and you hear it and don't do anything, if you hear it and don't act on it, you might as well have not heard it. Big whoop, nothing changes. The juice, the power is in the action. And I know that you can think about your life, your daily routine, whatever it is, and see that difference. And know and see that the juice is in the action. You can think about mowing your lawn all week, but you only see the change when you take action. And I know that some days that action is easier to take than others. Some days that action is a little bit easier to step into than others. And it's tough because action, the action that you and I can take, there's only one person responsible for that action. And that's you. When it comes to my life, my daily routine, there's only one person that is solely responsible for the actions that I take and don't take, and that is me. And this is where, and I don't know if you're like me in this, but this is where I find the biggest challenge. Because it's very easy for me to take action for others. It is much more difficult for me to take action for myself. I, I, I can look around, uh, let's say I look around the house and I can see things that like, well, if I do that, that will uh, help uh, Amber, my wife, to feel relaxed when she gets home. So I can act on that. But when it comes to things that, when it comes to things that, that I think could be healthy for me or, or, or things that I want to do in my life, ways that I want to grow, it's much more challenging for me to take action. And I wish I knew what stopped it? Maybe I do know. Maybe you already know for the things in your life. We've been talking for five weeks. Where do you wish you were? What would it take for you to get there? Let's take a few examples. Let's say everyone wants, not everyone, okay. Most people, some people, I'll just say me, you live your life. Let's say someone like me wants to lose a pound or two. I really want to lose three pounds. That's Mean Girls, Regina George, in case you were wondering. I really want to lose three pounds. Let's say you really want to lose three pounds. What would you need to do? What would you need to do? You know I don't. Do you need to cut out sodas? That'll help. Do you need to stop eating sweets? That would help. Do you need to stop overeating? That would help. These are all things that I know that I need to do, but do I always take action on those things? No. Let's say you want to get in shape. You want to have a little bit more muscles. 
You wish, you wish you could have arms like Matthew Worthington. I'll tell you, it takes work. What would you need to do to do that? Would you have to start working out, get a workout routine, find a gym, purchase some weights, then you have to get workout clothes, then you have to figure out when you're going to shower because when you're going to get sweaty. Am I already talking you out of it? Am I already talking you out of working out? <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe it's, it's hard to make these changes. It's hard to take these actions that will fill the, that will fill the gap in where we are and, wish we, and where we wish we could be because it can seem so overwhelming. Making, making changes in our life feels overwhelming. It can feel overwhelming. Making changes in our life can sometimes be very, very difficult, and it is so much easier to do what we're already doing. It's so much easier to stay in the routine that we already have. So if we're not in the routine of going to church, if we're not in the routine of reading the Bible, if we're not in the routine of praying uh, each day, if we're not in the routine of having a date night with our uh, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, whatever, if we're not in the routine of hanging out with our kids, if we're not in the routine of going to bed on time, these are difficult changes to make unless we can decide to take action. If we choose to commit. Now, there's a big fat difference from losing 30 pounds and making the choice to start losing weight. When you choose to commit, your action changes your life. Our team, we, uh, our leadership team, we read a book a couple of months ago called Atomic Habits, and I think it came out a couple of years ago. James Clear, I think, is the guy's name, the author. Don't worry about correcting me on that if it's wrong. And in this book, Atomic Habits, he, he has this brilliant idea. He has this example of someone who wanted to start working out more. Check this out. Tell me, tell me if you can wrap your head around this, because I, I don't know if I could. For someone who started working out more, and what this person would do is they would pack their workout clothes with them when they went to work for the day, okay? They packed their workout clothes. And so at the end of the day, instead of having the excuse of, well, I don't want to have to go home to get my stuff to go to the gym, that barrier is already removed. You see the thinking there? Okay, I could wrap my head around that, right? And then the next thing this person would do is this person would go to the gym, change, get into their workout clothes, and they would set a timer for two minutes. No joke. They would set a timer for two minutes, and they'd start working out. And at the timer, as the timer went up, two minutes, they would say, all right, that's it. That's my time for the gym for today. I'm going to head home. They did this for two weeks. And the next time, after two weeks, they go to the gym, and they set their timer for five minutes. And you might think, we, we kind of think in our minds, two minutes, you're wasting your time. Two minutes is not enough for a workout. That's not enough time to eat a meal. But what was happening is this person was creating a pattern, creating a habit of no matter what, after work, I'm packing my workout clothes and I am going to show up to the gym. And after three weeks... Then he was able to say, well, I'm already here. I might as well stay and get a full workout in. But for this person, the habit of showing up made all the difference. So let's say you're someone, you may, have you ever told yourself, don't raise your hand for this, have you ever told yourself, man, I, I wish I read the Bible more, but I just can never get into it, or sometimes it's boring, or I don't really find the time, or I forget to. Or maybe you tell yourself, I, I wish I prayed more. I love when I hear people pray, and I, I would love to be able to pray more and pray for my city and pray for my family and, and pray for what God is doing. Maybe you, maybe you told yourself, I, 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 wish, I wish I had a deeper connection with God. I wish I could talk to God more and focus on my relationship with God more. What if I told you that it's not, it's, it doesn't have to be this giant shift in your life? 
It doesn't have to be as overwhelming as finding the right Bible and then picking the right Bible reading plan and making sure that you're, you're, you're reading it the right way and that you're doing it every single day. What if it was as simple as downloading the YouVersion Bible app and just opening it once a day for three weeks? Just opening it. Don't read it. Don't pick a plan. Don't scroll through anything. Just open it and close it. I don't know if this will work for you. I know we're all different people and we all approach things differently. But what I do want you to take away from this is you get to control the action that you take. The path to changing your life can and will start with a decision that you can make today. That's how simple and profound action is. That the path for you To be where you wish you were starts with a decision that you can make today. Let's say you want to be a more patient person. You wish you were patient. You've seen patient people. You know patient people. I wish I were more patient. You know what you can do today? Just while you're driving around today in traffic, let everyone ahead of you. Let everyone ahead of you. Is that already stressing you out? <laughs> oh, man, we were driving the other day. My wife and I, or I was driving, and some, you know, some guy, probably a sweet, sweet man, was just like, you know, stop and go. I'm like, come on, man. Just very gently, I said it like that. <laughs> I was like, come on, man, let's go. And Amber's like, why are you in a rush? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't have to be in a rush to be bothered by the way this guy is driving. <laughs> uh, that is a true thing I said about a fellow human being that I love and support that lives in our city. I don't have to be in a rush. Ah, but see, look, do I want to be patient or not? That's up to me. Do you want these things? Do you want to be patient? Do you want to be a more spiritual person, whatever that means to you? What what is one thing that you want to start doing? You know what? Tomorrow, start it. What's one thing that you wish you weren't doing anymore? Tomorrow, you know what? Don't do it. Give yourself a chance to start the process of beginning to change. Changing our life seems like this gigantic shift, and it is, but the choice to commit to changing it is not. The choice starts today. And if you're anything like me, you're afraid of making a commitment to change, and then what if you make a mistake? What if you say, I want to eat healthy for the rest of the week, but you don't? You go grab some chips at 10 p.m., whatever it is. So we're afraid to make those mistakes, or at least I am. So I think, you know what, I might as well just not even do it. Now, you guys are in for a rare treat today because I probably haven't rhymed on purpose in over four years, but we're going to rhyme today, okay? You can't lose if you continue to choose. You can't lose if you continue to make the choice over and over again. Because let's say you want to become more patient. You want to be less uh, less angry. And so you say, okay, well, today I'm going to choose. It might be easy for you to say, all right, Dom, today I'm going to choose. In this environment, it seems very easy and safe for me to choose and say, I'm going to be a more patient person. But then you're going to get out in traffic. And then someone's going to want to cut in front of you. And you might remember, I think Dom said something about letting them in. So I'll let one person in. But we all know the rules of the road. One person. Don't get crazy. Hold on. (laughs) Do you you ever put your hand up to a car? Is that just me that does that? Hold on, buddy. But 
But if you make a mistake, if you trip up, you can continue to choose it. I'm, I'm going to give you permission today to just continue to choose what you already chose. You, wanted, you chose to be patient. I give you permission, okay, if you need it. I'm going to give you permission to choose to do it again, even if you mess up. You want to start reading the Bible more, not just for the sake of reading it, not just to be someone who reads the Bible, but because you want to explore more of the nature of God. And you like what that does for you. That I'm, I'm just going to give you permission, if you need it, to say, if you miss a day, don't worry about it. You can still continue to choose to open up the Bible app. You can still continue to choose to read it, even if you missed it. That is the power of action. The gap between where we were and where we want to be is a simple bridge called action. That is what gets us to where we wish we could be. Because I'm telling you, if you look back at your life, you'll be able to see the growth that you've had. And the growth that you've had, no one grows on accident. Nobody matures on accident. I'm sure you all can name on one hand a few of the people in your life that probably should have matured if it happens by accident, but it doesn't. We choose to make wiser decisions. We choose to be more faithful in our relationships and our friendships. We choose to work harder at our jobs or we choose to not. Our action determines our path. And I'm gonna rhyme one more time. You can't lose if you continue to choose. So now this wide gap between where you are and where you wish you can be doesn't seem so stretched. It doesn't seem so impossible if we can make the commitment to choose, to take action in our life. So I don't know what it is for you. I don't, know, I don't know what the change is that you want to see in your life, what the change is that you want to see in your spiritual growth. But I want you to be able to, to take away from this today is that any action is a step of growth. Any action. The choice today to grow into that is action. The choice to commit to finding a plan for whatever change you want to make, that is action. That's the challenge I want you to take away from this series and the challenge I want you to take away from today. So if you could, real quick, uh, uh, close your eyes and bow your head. I, I want to I present this challenge to you today. I want you to take action today if that's what you choose to do. That's what's so powerful about action is it is your choice. And if you're not ready for it and you don't want to, you are empowered to not make that choice. But for those of you today, I want to empower you to make that choice if you're ready to do that. If you, if you want to say to yourself, and remember, you're not making a commitment to me. I'm not going to ask you to, to make this challenge and commitment to me. This is just for you. So my challenge for you today is wherever, wherever in your life where you are somewhere that you are not wanting to be and you wish you could be somewhere else and you want to choose today to take action towards that, that on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. So everybody's eyes closed, every head bowed. On the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. And when you raise your hand, here's what you'll be saying. You'll be saying, I am committing to taking action today. I am committing to taking action and closing the gap of where I am and where I wish I could be in life. So on the count of three, raise your hand. One, two, three. Put your hand up real quick, just so I can see it, and go ahead and put it down. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for what we have today, for what we have in this community. Thank you for giving us the bravery and the boldness to step out in faith, to take action, to not be scared of failure, to not be scared of a mistake, to not be scared of a misstep, but to know that we can continue to choose to take action even if we miss it. That we have you, our faithful God, in our corner. Knowing that if we slip up along the way, you are faithful to be there for us and in us. 
that you are there to help us close the gap with our action, with our faith, and with your faithfulness between who we are, where we are, and where we hope to be, the person we hope to become. So we thank you for that. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all, thanks so much for joining us today at The Heart. To find out what is next for you in your journey of faith, I want to invite you to go to theheart.church slash next. See what's in store for you. Get in touch with us. We would love to be able to connect with you and see how we can partner with you in your journey. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you soon.